Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Swish Waterlead podcast. Super grateful for all of Waterlead's partners who continue to help make this podcast happen. And if you're new to the podcast and unsure what Swish is, well, let me tell you, it is a super cool platform which allows you to get a video message from some of your favorite sports stars. And with Mother's Day around the corner, here's a chance for you to get your mum one for Mother's Day. Imagine giving your mum a Mother's Day message from the great Jackson, Garden, Bishop, all for 20 bucks, and a large portion of that goes to Kiwi Kids Charities. And you can also make it even cheaper by getting an extra 10% off that price by using the code MUM10. And I'll leave a link in the description, so you just have to go click on that. It is super easy, and your mum will be super stoked with you. Also, as I sit here on this cold evening, sipping my favourite cup of Pomeroy's tea, it reminds me of another great idea for Mother's Day. If your mum loves a good cup of coffee or a good cup of tea, then here's a chance for you to become her favourite son. Order any of the Pomeroy's wide range of teas or coffee and you can get an extra 20% off your order using the code LAD03. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can have easy access to the code. Special thank you to all the sponsors, very much appreciated, but now it is time to get to the main event. Let's roll the intro. June. Well, I have another absolute treat for you all with one of the most promising players in New Zealand rugby, who also happens to be one of the biggest lads going around. He was a schoolboy sensation, making all the New Zealand age grade teams. He was then picked up extremely young by the Wellington Lions and the Hurricanes. He's represented the New Zealand Maldives, and he now plays his provincial footy for Hawke's Bay. He is the pride of Gizzy. It is Isaiah Walker Lawetti. Welcome, mate. Thanks for having me, Jeb. Uh, it was weird. I've never really called you by your full first name like that. That was a bit, bit odd. It's always been Izzy from Gizzy for me. Yeah, well, no one really has either. <laughs> I'm sure most people don't even know what my real name is. <laughs> when did you get your nickname? Oh, that was um, my last year of school. I did that. Um, when you just Canes came up, boys came up to the Gizzy for camp. Yeah. And then Skuck sort of just gave me the nickname and then it's stuck ever since. True. Oh, I thought you had it from when you must have been a wee kid, but you, you got it then. Yeah, that, I just ran with it, eh? And I was like, yeah, well, Skuck gave me it. <laughs> right, well, he says goes, eh? Yeah, especially when you're young and you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your hero, eh, just gives you this nickname. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crack up. But, mate, awesome to see you back playing. Been a long rehab period for you. Uh, back-to-back games on absolute fire straight from the get-go. How's it felt? Oh, the, the body's banged up at the moment, but <laughs> it's been good just to get a run around with the boys finally again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And your form's been on fire. You're obviously doing the work um, during your rehab period, doing all the hard yards. Yeah, well, you know, Lee Van, he's got me on those, <laughs> the gun show program, so <laughs> I'm hopefully, hopefully he is. As big as him. <laughs> well, Chrono. Chrono's got big guns too, eh? Oh, he's, he's a different kind of breed there, Chrono. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you find that rehab period? Um, well, it's kind of weird. At the start, I thought I was going to be out for the whole season. Yeah. So at the start of that, I was just like, just eating whatever I wanted, to be honest. <laughs> Wasn't that really doing any training. And then about... I had like a three month checkup, and then they were like, "Oh, you could be back in April." And I was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah." <laughs> so then I had to get in shape real quick, eh? So it was actually a fun, enjoyable process. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it? Was the initial diagnosis twelve months, and then it what got cut to six? Was it? Yeah. The initial was um yeah twelve months, and then after surgery it was nine months. Yeah. And then like three months um, checkup, they reckon, oh, you could be back in like three three months. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> got me good there. <laughs> Mate, what a rehab from you. What were you doing? How did you do that? Oh, just jumped on that Waisaki in the hole of Fiji and leaves. <laughs> <mostly. laughs> did you try something like that? Did you try something alternative? No, I just... I don't know. Just happened out of the blue, real. 
Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> but that's cool. So then once you found out that you were um, only three months away, you obviously had to get your act into gear pretty quick. Yeah. I was, well, the boys were already starting preseason, so that helped. That helped right. with, like, the process of being around, like, everyone still. Mm. Like, if I was alone, I probably would have struggled a lot more. Because mm. yeah. you, are, you are, like, a cruisy guy. Eh? You've always been a real cruisy character. I've um, heard a lot of guys talk about, how they dealt with their time being injured. What What are you like? You're pretty chilled out. Not Not too much sort of phases, you eh? Yeah, I wasn't really phased too much. Eh? Um, it just meant I could hang out with, like my daughter and spend a bit more time with my family. So that was that was probably the positive part of it. Yeah, how's that been? Obviously, a new dad now. Um, exciting times for anyone. Um, I guess they make you grow up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, they definitely do make you grow up. <laughs> weekends have changed a bit <laughs> <laughs> a lot less sleep as well i've noticed <laughs> yeah and how have you found it no it's been good it's been real enjoyable um yeah it's like just a little version of yourself pretty much and yeah yeah and you get to i guess choose how their future goes and how their life plans out so it's been fun biggest adjustment for you um the weekends <laughs> nah, probably like get, probably the last say after the game on the weekend getting home and I was pretty knackered eh? and then but you, you just go back to dad life and there's no really <laughs> <all button. laughs> yeah. yeah that's it they, they don't care how, how your 80 minutes went eh? <laughs> how many times you got know smashed <laughs> <laughs> so how old how old is she now uh, she's two Two in a bit now, yeah. True. So she's like into everything. Yeah. Jumping off stuff, freaking injuring everything. Mate, <laughs> just like the old man. Have you got plans or any more? Oh, we'll, we'll see, Jeb. Oh. We'll see how this one You <laughs> <laughs> Check the spanner in there. <laughs> <laughs> Announcement video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the old um, gender reveal sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but speaking of um, kids and growing up, I'm pretty keen to hear about what life was like for you growing up in Gizzy. Um, awesome part of the world. Give us the rundown on what life was like for you. Well, I was actually um, brought up in Rotoria, up in the East Coast. Spent all my childhood, all my family still up there. Um, spent most of it on the farm. Wasn't really into rugby growing up. I was just more like just something to do for fun, just running around in bare feet. And, you know, I used to watch the, the old man play club rugby. Yeah. And then all the kids on the sideline will have our own game. But, yeah, um, went to primary school at Manutahi. It's closed down now because there's not really much people up there now. <laughs> um, spent... By year nine and ten at um, Ngata Memorial College, which is in Rotoria. Yeah. And then, yeah, year 11, moved to Gizzy Boys, and then that was pretty much the start of my rugby journey, yeah. Did you move there because of rugby? Um, yeah. Well, um, I follow, our coach was Tom Kins, and um, he had been up the coast watching a few of our games, and he sort of... Talked me into moving to Boar's Eye, so oh, true. always grateful right. for him. He's been um, – he started everything for me. So were you yeah. good when you were coming through the age groups, even as a young fella? Were you – you're probably way bigger than everyone else, were you? Yeah, I was a lot bigger than everyone. I was a lot skinnier than I am now too. <laughs> I was uh, – well, when I was younger, I used to play fullback right. until – I used to play fullback actually until I moved to Gizzy Boys. Did you? Oh, all the way through. Yeah. Right. What was yeah, your kicking then, game uh, like? Oh, you know, you've seen me at training, Jeb. <laughs> Tony Ward. I'm good for a good drop, good, good drop kick. <laughs> <laughs> so wh- why did you move to lock then? Or why did you move into the pack? That would have been a hard move. Well, backs weren't really bred the same height as Geordie Barrett was back then. <laughs> <laughs> so I sort of grew a bit too tall, put on a bit of weight, and then... <laughs> It was like, yep, you're playing lock now. <laughs> and I was like, sweet. <laughs> so 
So were you pretty were you keen to move in into the um tight stuff? Oh, I don't really mind uh back when at school it was more like just playing with the boys, mm. playing because it was fun and just enjoying the time, yeah. Mate, you're just too cruisy. Yeah, you just go wherever someone tells you. Yeah. Well, if Alfie told me to play centre tomorrow, I'll play. Among a Jensen to walk a little way. <laughs> what a big midfield that would be. <laughs> oh. Probably be a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> but your old man, you mentioned your old man before. Um, not everyone will know, but he played for Fiji, didn't he? So. He was a pretty gun union player as well. Yeah, he, well, when I was younger, he played like from 99 to like 2002 for East Coast. Oh, yeah. And then he played like, I think it was two World Cups for um, Fiji. So, yeah, it wasn't too bad. He played lock as well. So, oh, yeah. But I was a lot more skillful than he is. <laughs> <laughs> he likes what? to think he, he gave me some talent but... <laughs> What sort of an influence did he have on your um, rugby career though? Um, he was good, he was um, just there as like support I guess He didn't really force me into playing rugby or anything mm. It was just, if I was wanted to do it, he'll just support me Because yeah. watching games at East Coast, watching East Coast play at their home ground. It's pretty special, yeah. eh? So you would have been involved with all of that side of things, seeing your old man um, be a part of that as well. Um, must have been pretty hard to not get stuck into rugby and not love the game. Yeah, well, rugby's like a, how would you say it? It's like a religion mm. up on the East Coast. Like the community comes together every weekend. The team, East Coast hasn't been that good like past years, but like the people and the support will always still be there. So that's the kind of good thing about being from up there, yeah. Would you ever play for East Coast? I've actually talked about it with a few boys about going back and playing yeah. one day. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully one day. Mate, how good would that be? <laughs> so good. Are you? What, what's it like when you go back there and um, see everyone? Are you like a bit of a hero, a bit of a god? You're the king of East Coast, aren't you? Oh, everyone knows I play footy, but they all sort of just – no one really cares, eh? Up there, like, <laughs> if you picture me, everyone's sort of like me, like, relaxed. They're like, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't really care who you are. They just look to you normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that is a cool thing. But even other sports, like growing up, I, I heard you're quite good at basketball too, which I find hard to believe after watching you shoot a few bricks and a few one on one games with TJ. Oh, back in my heydays, I was, um, I actually had the opportunity to go to Rotorua Boys for um, basketball. Eh? Did you? Oh, yeah. I was like, either go to Raiders for B ball or go to Gizzy for rugby. So thankfully, I chose rugby, but who knows? I might have been Stephen Adams before Stephen mm. Adams. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> so were you, were you that good at basketball? I was all right. I wouldn't say I was gone. But... Yeah. Yeah. And what were you like at rugby at that age? Did you think you were? pretty good chance of making a job out of it i wasn't i didn't really know you could do that like yeah. another case i never like pictured doing it as like a life like a life job it was more just playing with footy with the bros yeah that's what was yeah when did that start to change obviously he started making all these teams um everyone wanted your <laughs> signature from about the age of 16 wanting you on their books um when did you know that hey this could actually be something it was, um, well, making all the age grade teams was pretty like eye opening. Mm. Like, most of the boys that are in the team now that I did all age grade with and like played with them. So, but not till maybe they camp when you when the Canes boys came up to oh, Gizzy, yeah. and I was like, wow, this could actually be like an actual thing, yeah. So, they made me want it more, I guess, yeah. So, Speaking of that camp, oh, that was pretty crazy. So you were still at school at the time. Hurricanes are training up and are having a preseason camp up in Gizzy, um, and you come along, train with them for the week, and you just fit in like your old experience uh, veteran, Super Rugby veteran. No one even noticed the seventeen or eighteen year old kid was training with us. I actually got a funny story from um, the camp. Eh? I remember we, I think we were playing. Kong games or something, and I, I was like too scared to jump in the middle, 
So I like stand on the edge and then um, Skax threw a miss pass to me and it went in, and I wasn't there to like catch it. Like it was in front of me. And then he was like, get a effing winger on there. Like get a bloody <laughs> winger over there. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit. And I was like, scared as I was so scared, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, he, was, he was scary. <laughs> no mucking around, man. <laughs> <laughs> and is that when he gave you the nickname to make up for it? <laughs> a muscle. <laughs> yeah. True. Oh, that's hard case. But what was it? What was it like? What was it like training with the rest of the boys? Like being in amongst that at that age? It was pretty good because eh? um I sort of knew like Blade and Tor and it just because they've been in and out. Of like Gizzy because they're old Gizzy boys, um, so it was good. Like I could hang out with them, but I like get to know everyone else as well. Yeah, crazy, so good. And then you made like New Zealand schools. You made New Zealand twenties. Couple of trips for you um, at an early, a pretty young age. I'd imagine these were sort of your first trips out of New Zealand. Um, what were you like on tour? Oh. You could ask anyone. I was trouble, man. <laughs> <laughs> this young kid from the East Coast flying on planes for rugby. I was like, I was just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get up to? Real, oh, from like missing freaking meetings to just trying to look at everything. I was like amazed. <laughs> The biggest place I went to for rugby was like Gisborne. Now I'm freaking in Aussie. We played schoolboys in Aussie yeah. and the Goldie, and I was just like, wow, where am I? <laughs> Surface paraglots. I was like, this is too big for me. <laughs> yeah, that's funny you talk about like the professionalism of it all because, like you say, like you've mentioned, you're such a cruisy guy. Um, you've just always enjoyed playing rugby just to play with your mates and then suddenly you're in this sort of whole professional part of the game where it's so serious you can't miss meetings and stuff how did you find the adjustment to that i'm still adjusting now <laughs> <laughs> now nah, when i first came down i was like my first couple of years i was just too scared to like miss anything yeah so i was like getting alarms and everything the odd meeting i'll miss but i remember my first week of like academy when I first moved to Wellington. Yeah. I was like, because academy is so hard, man. Like you're trained from like six to eight and then you're straight to work straight after. Yeah. And then like the second day I slipped past through my alarm and I was like so scared of driving into <laughs> academy. And I was like, damn, I'm late. Good old Lardy was our um, academy manager back then and he was sweet as a but after that, man, I learned quick. How long were you in the academy for? Because I sort of thought you skipped that whole part of the um, rugby scene. You, I sort of thought you went straight into um, the Hurricanes in Wellington. Yeah, no, I was only doing it for like a month. <laughs> 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 I always crack up. I always tell my missus, I was like, do you not remember when I used to be a tradie? I used to be a builder. And then she was like, you've done that for two weeks. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it was building. Is that what you were going to do? Yeah, I was going to do building, and then Bordy gave me the call, and he was like, "Someone's injured. We need a trainer." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, sweet as." Told my boss, and he was like, "Oh, yeah, latest." <laughs> <laughs> then that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> never been back. <laughs> never been back. Never going back to. It. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's classic. But you made New Zealand 20s as well, and you made it a year young from memory. What was oh, that yeah. like? Oh, that was, that was a huge surprise, eh? Because um, usually the, they pick the squad from, like, the Oceania comp before, and yeah. I, I I got injured, so I, like, fractured my eye or something. And then so the boys went away to that, and then, like, a week later after they got back, they named the team for the World Cup. And then I just seen my name in there and I was like, oh, wow. Because I was like still coming back from injury. And then yeah. so the first year was like a Blu-ray. So, but it was good fun. We went to Manchester, I think it was. We actually had a good team, even though oh, back then we were like the worst result or something <laughs> for our team for the 20s ever. Yeah. <laughs> so our team, our team was known as the worst team ever. <laughs> but we actually had some gun players there. 
Mm. Who stood out? Well, obviously, Geordie. Yeah, yeah. Geordie was there. Lenny Apiso was there. Yeah. Um, where Marino, Dalton, TJ Vars, Sam Nock, Sean Stevenson. Oh. We're like a pretty good team, but just results didn't go our way. So. Mm. Did you get feedback yeah. from the coaches going into that that you were in the frame, or was that just completely out of the blue? That was completely out of the blue. I was like, I wasn't expecting to see my name. Yeah. But then I just kept getting notifications on my phone. And then I was like, hey. And I was clicked on it. And I see my name. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was so happy at the time. Yeah. But, like, surprise there is a surprise mm. there's. And was it intimidating going in there, being a year younger, or age doesn't really matter at that level? No, it was it was real it was real good because we had like seven or eight of us that were a year young. Oh yeah. Yeah. So there was a few and I already knew like all the ones and boys like TJ, Marlo and that. Oh yeah. So it was, it was actually all good. Yeah. And then touring to Manchester, this boy from the East Coast. Hey, hey. You talked about the Gold Coast. Manchester would have been a whole new level for you. Oh, different weather as well. Mm. It was like pretty much raining, overcast like every day. I was like, come on, man. Give me back to good old sunny <laughs> Gilly. <laughs> did you guys get to did you guys get to go out much or anything? Or did you get up to much stuff off the field in those sort of tours? Um, yeah, there's a few like malls around. Um, because we were pretty much staying in like in the city, mm. so it was pretty easy just to go on like for a walk, just with your mates, or just some of the teammates. Yeah, walks and malls sounds hissing. <laughs> but yeah, you spend most of your time training, so yeah, <laughs> true. And then the following year, you you're obviously probably expecting to make it this year, and you make it this time. You're off to Georgia. What an experience that would have been. Oh, was, Georgia country was like pretty third world. Like there was like broken down buildings, like mansions that are abandoned. Mm. It's pretty run down, to be honest. But it was pretty good because like we just stuck together as a team. Like we were pretty much staying out in the warps and then we only had each other. Yeah. So like it just brought us together better, I reckon. And had some success but, on the field as well, eh? Yeah. We had, our team was real stacked, I'd say now. Like, to where the boys are at now, we had, like, a real stacked team. <laughs> Who'd you have? Yeah. Oh, we had, like, Will, a young Will Jordan, oh. Caleb Clark, a Safa more Dalton, uh, Luke Jacobson was our captain. Yeah. We had Braden Edmore, Stephen Pirofeta. We had... Oh. We had quality. We had heaps and heaps of players. Mate. And any any good stories from um either of those tours? Uh, what's the tournament like when you finish it? I know you love a beer, so oh, it was probably the oh, I'll tell you a story, yeah. Here we so go. We went, yeah, um... He's the real, is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we went to um so we had this big dinner for like after tourney stuff. We rock up. All the teams have gone into this massive building and we have to come in last because, like, we won. Yeah. But outside the building, it would have been, like, a good five-meter-long table and there's just drinks after drinks after <laughs> drinks. And then it's only our team outside and the boys are cheering at it, like, going at it. It was so good, man. And then we, we got inside, everyone got to our tables and then these waiters started bringing out bottles of Jamesons to our tables. Yeah. And then so the boys were hoeing into there. And then we jumped into the bus and we actually we actually went to a concert on our way home. Who was it? <laughs> so oh no, it was, it was like a describe it as like a mini RV. Oh so yeah. It was like yeah. A, so like the boys stopped at, at this festival, jumped out, and we were going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So the boys are on, the boys are on top of the moon, just won the comp, and then you let them loose at a freaking festival, and there's a few like the bus on the way home was like spew everywhere. It was crazy. <laughs> you would have had to lead the charge at the um, festival because I know you're an R and V legend. Um, 
everyone talks about you when they mention the word R and V. You're a known myth up there. So um, did you lead the way there? Oh yeah. You have to. You have to lead the way. <laughs> You've got to be as good off the field as you are on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh good times. How many times did you go to R and V, by the way, to become the legend of R and V? Um when we were younger at school, um, we used to actually like sneak into R and V. Do you have to be or, eighteen like, to get in? You have to be eighteen no, to get no. in. But but you looked eighteen. Me and, me and a few of my mates used to try. We used to, we figured out how to like slip bands off for us. Oh yeah. So you loosen them. You get someone else to go pick it up and then slip it off, slip it onto yours, and you you're away laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I think everyone just puts. Izzy from Gizzy and R and V together. So <laughs> just because I'm from Gizzy means I'm <laughs> I love R and V. Well, it's good stuff. Okay, but well, you did you did speak about um, your brief academy times and then straight into the Hurricanes, straight into Wellington Lions. What was that adjustment like for you? Um, it was pretty eye opening, eh? Like how um, I think the biggest thing was getting my time management right <laughs> from like at school, you pretty much go to school and train after school to it being your full-time job and mm-hmm. you're having to go to this meeting and then five minutes later, you got to be in this meeting and then you got to go train. And then the worst thing was making my own lunches. <laughs> Oh, I was, hor- I was horrendous at making my own lunch, man. <laughs> my best friend was the supermarket. <laughs> oh, <laughs> TJ cuts you every day. Home. Yeah, every day. <laughs> and is that something you had to adjust to? Obviously, um, diet, probably you probably put on weight easier than some people. Did you ever have struggles with that? Yeah, pretty much every summer break. <laughs> well summer break's the worst man because you have you have christmas you have new year's and new year's is a festival yeah <laughs> and then you go home and like no one really cares what diet you're on they're just cooking whatever they want yeah so it's just like and i gain weight easy like mm. i could put on weight easy the hardest bit is losing it <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I found um, trying to cut the bad stuff pretty hard. Eh? What, like the takeaways, the easy options, was it? Or is it just yeah, your local more like, Yeah, more like the easy options. Like, it was so easy just to, oh, especially in Wellington, like, there's like KFC every second <laughs> block. Like, McDonald's is pretty much. Well, now it's Uber Eats. Like, yeah, it's, don't even have to leave your house. So, so who were you living yeah, with? Um, oh, when I first moved down, I moved in with um, Toby Robson. He was our media guy. Oh, that's camps. true. Yeah, yeah, because he was a porniki man. Yeah. So I moved in with him for like a couple months. Is that where you got so good at uh, media? Yeah, that's why I love it, man. <laughs> I love good media. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but a few of the boys from school moved down, so I moved ended up moving in with them for the rest of the, my first year down there. And then my partner in that the next year. How hard was it to be living with your um schoolmates who obviously um they wouldn't care about things like nutrition or uh, professional diets or things like that? How hard was that? It was actually pretty good, like, because my first year, I knew I wasn't going to play with the Canes, so mm. I was sort of just, like, training, and then I, like, play club rugby, and then enjoy my weekend, like, yeah. enjoy a good night out, and, like, just enjoy being young, because mm. I knew I wasn't, had no expectation of playing any sort of super rugby, so I sort of enjoyed my younger, fresh years down. Mm. And then that, was it that year you were playing for um, Wellington? Yeah, made my debut. I think there was four of us that debuted on that game. It was me, a sophomore, Peter, Alex, and Kimura. So we all um, debuted together, here, which was pretty cool. What was that like? Did you feel ready? Um, 
I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. Mm. Um, it was funny. My, my actually first game for the Lions was against Hawks Bay. And then my first game for Hawks Bay was against Lions. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> And how did you go? How did you go on that first one? So I was supposed to be on the bench. And then um, Mark Reddish pulled out of the game. So then I had to start. And then after the first kickoff, it was it was good. Eh? It was so fun. Are you a nervous guy? Because um, you're obviously very cruisy, chilled out. Do you get nervous before games or are you still literally just like playing with your mates when you go out there no matter what the stage? Yeah, I don't really pay attention to like what situation it is or what. Even when we're like in game, like some boys are like panicking when like something goes wrong, but like, I just brush it off. Right? Like if I if I drop the ball, I just like to smile about it, just yeah. to forget. Yeah, mate, that's cool. That's a cool mindset to have, eh? Yeah, well, I'm lucky, I guess. Lucky to have it. The cruisy nature, love it. But then, uh, talk to me about your call up into the Hurricanes and your Hurricanes debut. Oh yeah, well, my debut didn't go too well. We lost. Who was but, that against? Oh, we played uh, Canberra. I played at the. The brown beef in Canberra. Oh, yeah. It was about minus one degrees. And I'm sitting on the bench, freezing like hell. <laughs> and then I get on, get on with like 20 minutes to go. And I was like, well, this is this is special, man. Yeah. It was really, um, it was way more physical way eh, mm. than like minus 10 or like 20s or anything. So that was like the big, thing I noticed but it was like it was real enjoyable because for the like two years before that I was like like understudy to like Michael Fitz and Sam Lousy and them yeah. and to actually like debut with them was like pretty mean eh? yeah, yeah what 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 were they like to learn off oh they're um I think they're good for me because eh? they both professional and like they like to enjoy themselves as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're real handy, like, to have around in my career. Mm-hmm. And now you're obviously the big dog of the Canes, big dog of that pack. Um, you must be shit passing on your knowledge for the, all the young guys coming through. Yeah, it feels weird, man. Like, well, I'm only 25, but, like, I mm. feel like I've been around for forever. Yeah, you yeah. have. And, like, and we do have, like, a fairly – like young team, so I just sort of like looking after the younger boys. Mm. I, I don't really speak much, or I don't really have the best advice, but <laughs> I <could. laughs> well, off the field, I might have the better advice than on the field. So, <laughs> but no, yeah, I sort of like like looking after the boys. Yeah, no doubt. So, what what's some of your favourite memories as a hurricane? Um, well, when the boys. Are, Won the comp. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to be the injury replacement, and yeah, that was a special time, man. That was like something I could I'll always remember. Even though, like, obviously, I wasn't fully signed, but like, just to be around it, like, to experience, it makes me like actually want to actually win one myself, mate. You will. This is the year. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Hopefully, mate. Hopefully. You do. What about um some trips to South Africa? I know you've always enjoyed your times in South Africa. Yeah, well, South Africa's different as well. So good business class flight. That's that always helps. Yeah. Helps the airpoints too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing out on a few airpoints these days. Yeah, true. No Thank South you. African traps. Yeah, no South African trips. Usually the boys are like, just keep me on the flight so I can get to gold. <laughs> <laughs> but South Africa's um I'd say the crowds at the games are wild. Mm. Like you just hear them chirping at you at you the whole game and like running into the tunnel, running out of the tunnel, just stuff getting thrown at you. But I guess it's all a part of the experience, which is good, yeah. Mm. And how's the how's the team looking this year? How have you have you found this year's campaign? Obviously, you've uh, been out injured for most of it. Uh, managed to get a couple yep. of big shifts in since your return. How do you think the team's looking? Um, 
I think we've um we're tracking in the right direction. Obviously, we're at the hard part of the hard parts. I guess, yeah, <laughs> great, great watery analogy. <laughs> hard parts, <laughs> but I think we're tracking in the right direction. Like we're getting well. The, we just had the storm week, and we've like developed depth in our squad, so yeah. everyone had to like have a chance to play and show what they've got. So. I think we're tracking in the right direction. And, um, yeah, well, the helps that TJ's back, like an experienced game driver. And, obviously, Artie's leading the way, so there's no one better to follow than them two. Yeah, oh, greats, two of the greats. And what are your thoughts on Magic Round? Obviously, it's a pretty cool concept, all the games at one ground. It's unreal, I reckon. Mm. Especially it's an, it's an Aussie, so. That's even better. <laughs> if it was in Wellington, I'd be like, oh, no, nah. cancel it, cancel it. <laughs> but no, nah, it's good. It'll be good to, um, hopefully, good crowds show up. Mm. It'll be good to, like, because I know league's obviously the main sport over there. So it'll be good to give, I guess, Australians experience rugby. Yeah. How do you think the rugby is going at the moment? Like the quality level of it? I think it's, a, it's been a lot more faster this year. Mm. I think even though like the scoreboards haven't been showing it, it's been a lot faster, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Everyone seems to be getting to the lineouts a lot quicker. Tempo seems to be a big theme from a lot of teams, eh? and the games do seem to have a lot more ball and play than maybe the last few years. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know that we've been pushed. We've always pushed the tempo, so it's – Everyone's playing in, like us now. How do, how do you find it? Do you enjoy the tempo? Is that probably a part where you'd rather be slowed down a little bit, get some more big collisions going? Oh, I love rugby, running rugby. Eh? Yeah. I like, like I'm a attack minded kind of player. So I love it. Eh? Mm. Is it true you um, injured your shoulder from doing a chip and chase? Is that a yarn or is that true? Yeah, well, that's actually um, true. Yeah. <laughs> Talk me well, through this one. So we played we played Maldives, we played um I think it was Fiji, and then the next week we had our club see me, which yeah. I wasn't actually allowed to play, but I sort of just stuck my way in there. And then so playing, and then I happened to be on the edge somehow. And then there was no one outside of me, so I was like Sweet, just put it on the foot and then went up, tried to tap it to one of my teammates, and then I just got pulled down, landed on my shoulder, and then I was on the ground going like this. And then while my team was like down the field carrying on play, nearly scoring, and I was just sitting there like, Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have chipped and chased. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it nearly good. ended in a try, so oh, it worked out, but it didn't work out for me. <laughs> it was the right play for the team, but oh, costly. Team first, you know, team first, Mark. Oh, you've, you've always had that mentality. <laughs> the one thing you did speak about was um, your time with the New Zealand Maldives. Um, you're obviously a very proud Maldi. What was it like being called into that side? Yeah, um, I remember when I first got named, I was just getting tagged and like, messages from so much like people from home mm. and it made me realize like who i'm actually representing and like who like actually like supports supports me as a person mm. so when i first got named i was like overwhelmed uh, yeah yeah because i remember speaking to oteddy black around it and he felt like i mean he always wanted to be a new zealand maori or maori all black um, even more so than an All Black, it was just that's what it meant to him to represent his people, like you say. The fun part about like being in, like when you're in the environment is you actually get to learn about like your culture and like the backgrounds of the meanings of everything. Mm. Where like it's good for some boys that like didn't really get to grow up experiencing it. Yeah. So they're actually like reconnecting with like where they're from and who they are and stuff. So mm. I reckon that's the best part about being in the environment, yeah. Can you speak te reo? Oh, I can understand, like, words, but I can't, like, 
fluently put a sentence together. Yeah. The next step. Oh, that's going to be good. That's the next next step, yeah. And uh, we've already spoken to um, Big Putty Putty Parkinson about a couple of tours. Um, Front-loading the week seemed to be quite a um, used term, and I would imagine you and him together were a big part of that. Yeah, well, we're the founding men- members of um, <laughs> Front-loading the week. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually, yeah. Well, it was just like a few of us boys, it was like our first tour with the Maldives away. Mm. And, like, we went to some unreal places. Like, we went to Chicago, Brazil, and Chile. Yeah. And we sort of thought we weren't allowed to stock up on alcohol at the end of the week. So we thought we'd start it at the week because no one would think we'll be doing it at the start of the week. So so the first, well, first couple of nights we'll go out and experience the places. So... It was, a, it was a good way of getting to experience the cities that were in, yeah. Yeah, what was what were the cities like? Like, obviously some cool places. Yeah, we Chicago, we went to, um, we actually went to that, that game where Clay Thompson shot like 11 threes in a game or something. It was the most threes in a game or something. You were there? Yeah, they, we, were, we, were actually, we were actually watching the game. True, front and loading. Like, yeah, front loading. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I won't say who I was with, but <laughs> um, yeah, the American, American sports life is different. Eh? It's it's like something you, have, if you're into it, you have to experience it. I think. What do they do so so much better than we do here? Um, well, they playlist a lot better. Um, <laughs> there's always something going on, like every break, every timeout, every halftime quarter. There's always something happening on the court. And then yeah. I think just the people, the mer- they're like real mad about their sports. So, mm. yeah. You also made a move up to Hawke's Bay, which is something which a lot of people want to know a bit more about. Why did you make the move up there? Why did you leave Wellington? Um, just closer to home, man. Um, being in Wellington and like obviously you're with the Canes in Wellington and then Lions is still in Wellington. It costs like, 600 bucks to like fly home mm. or like it's like seven eight hours to drive yeah so i don't i'd really go home so I'd like only go home like once or twice a year so the thought of going closer to home was like the big key factor for me yeah mm. and how'd you find it once you got up there Hawks bay there's a few lads up there yeah no nah, love today eh? the, the environment's hissing the culture's hissing the place is like chill airs like Beaches, surrounded by beaches, which is the fun part. So you get to get out on the water and stuff. But yeah, it was, it was real, real easy to get used to. Mm. And what's your contract status at the moment? You got how many more years you got with Hawks Bay and how many more years with the Hurricanes? Um, well, this must be the big announcement. Um, nah, I just re signed two years with the Canes and two oh. years with Hawks. <laughs> Hey, there it is. I knew there was an announcement coming. I hope I was hoping it was going to be a baby. But this is the second biggest news. <laughs> Two yeah, more so, years with the Canes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, just signed the dotted line and got it over here. Mate, how good. So you're obviously loving your time there in Wellington and Hawks Bay. Yeah, I love it, man. I wouldn't really wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Mate, exciting time. So that's you locked in for a couple of years. That'll take you to what? Um, 27 years old. Prime, prime time age. Have you got any ambitions to get overseas at all or not really? Nah, not really. Um, I find it too much of a hassle. Mm. <laughs> to be honest, can't, be, can't be bothered moving. <laughs> <laughs> so chilled out, you just cannot be bothered yeah. to move house. <laughs> I love yeah. it. <laughs> but nah, at the place I'm at at the moment, um, yeah, I'm happy to be staying around. Mm. And talk to me about your like international ambitions because obviously you're a highly promising player who's been sort of touted as being promising for a long time, but you're sort of at that age now where um, your form's just, I mean, you've only been back for a little while, but your form's so good that you must be in some sort of frame for that All Black selection. you also got the eligibility possibility to play for Fiji as well. Have you made up any decisions around that? 
yeah, well, re-signing here has probably made me, like, think about it. Yeah. But, yeah, I've definitely wanted to give the All Blacks a, a decent crack at least one more time and then see where it goes. But I'm really just enjoying playing my footy and mm. if it happens, it happens. I'm not really too fussed. So talk to me about that rule. So if you play for Fiji, does that make it harder for you to stay in New Zealand and be contracted with the Hurricanes? Yeah, I'm not actually too sure about it, but I think it's like um, Super Rugby teams only can have a certain amount of players that play for other oh, country. Yeah. Yeah. I think true. that's how it goes, but I'm not yeah. too sure. Because obviously the carrot of the 2023 World Cup will be a pretty tempting one to want to be at, um, whether it was yeah. with the All Blacks or with Fiji. But um, you're fully focused on the All Blacks till... Um, further down the line and then potentially um, the following one, if nothing comes of that black jersey between now and then? Yeah, yeah, that's the plan at the moment, yeah. Yeah, good. Have you had any feedback from um, the All Blacks or in particular your old man, John Plumtree? <laughs> nah, I haven't had anything. Eh? I'm just, just taking it game by game and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then it's, it's all good. Fair enough, mate. Looking forward to it. No doubt, I Mate, you're a bolter. You're a bolter for the 2023 World Cup for me. <laughs> oh, watch the back end of this comp and see this man on absolute fire. But you spoke about being a builder. Um, you loved your time building for a couple of weeks. Any plans for life after footy? Yeah, there's no plans at all then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have no idea. I'm just pretty much fully invested in this rugby at the moment. And then when I get there, I'll see what happens. Mm. Uh, would you look to move back to the East Coast when you finish? Is that where you think you'll end up? Yeah, I definitely um, want to do something around like helping out at the East Coast rugby. Mm. Um, definitely giving back would be a big part of it when I retire. So, yeah, hopefully help out in that area. Mate, you are a lad. Oh, such a lad. Well, anyway, as always, we've gone to Instagram for some questions. We had to go to it twice because I lost the first lot, but it means we got twice as many questions, which is good stuff for you, Izzy. First question, who's the best drinker at Hawke's Bay? This one came from someone who probably thinks he's a contender, Jonah Lowe. Oh, yeah, I could, could guess it. Um, <laughs> well, I would say Jonah Lowe, but he's, he's got a partner now, so he's kind of winded down and he's not as he's not as durable as he was once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to hurt him. <laughs> uh, I'd say like a Falau Fakatawa or Danny Tuala. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those kids go good, man. Mm, mate, you've got some good drinkers up there, don't you? Okay, next one. Why do they call you the big cheese? Oh, it was just, well, when I dyed my hair blonde and then a little bit of the black grew back, or like, like it is now. <laughs> Everyone started calling me mince and cheese. <laughs> and then so cheese sort of just stuck and then must be because I'm a big, big fella, then they just put big at the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Brandon Smith seemed to make it work, so <laughs> you probably can too. Yeah, we might have to get some some commercial going around there. <laughs> a bit of a collab, <laughs> commercial collab yeah. between the two cheeses. <laughs> Let's see where it will be in Melbourne. So we'll be in Melbourne this weekend. So. Mate, you should honestly send him a DM right now to see if you could catch up with the, another fellow cheese. I actually think we'll go we're going to the Warriors in Melbourne game because it's on Monday. Oh true. Are oh, you staying there? Yeah. yeah, we got um the Brumbies after that. So Oh wow, that's hissing. So you guys yeah. are you gonna go into any other of the union games as well? Um not sure. Not sure. No, you, you could fill are, your boots after your game. You could watch four games of footy and go watch the Warriors. It could be a hell of a yeah. weekend. <laughs> yeah, hell of a Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing the cheese collab. Okay. Um, how was it playing for Poniki under great new head coach, Reggie Goods? Oh, Reggie Goods, one of the greats. <laughs> it was no, it was good. Eh? It was been, it's been a few years since since I played for Pornicke because I mm. made the move up to Hawke's Bay. Um, 
it was good just to get minutes under. Um, Reggie's running a good cutter. Is he? He's yeah. They've set up like a academy there, so so boys are training all all year round, which is good. Yeah, right. That's intense. Eh? Intense for club footy. Good on you, Reggie. Good question. Okay, the the next question is from. Uh, Waterlands major sponsor Swish. If you could get a video shout out from any person in the world, who would it be and why? Oh, that's tough. Probably um, Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, we kind of look the same. On <laughs> <laughs> you can see it, man. <laughs> his, his nickname's the Cheese too. Yeah, I might have to get a collab with him as well. <laughs> oh, mate, the deal's coming from this podcast. Oh, so good. <laughs> Let's start it now. <laughs> okay, next one. Would you, This is a good one. Would you rather sleep in Chrono's bed every night for a week or have one bath with Jason Holland? Oh, I'm thinking they won't. They'll both be not enjoyable at all. <laughs> But one bath wouldn't hurt, would it? <laughs> oh, shit, I'd love to see you and Alfie in a bath nude. <laughs> oh, this is going to be clipped in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, next one. How often do you think about the size of space? Size of space? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe every weekend. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too often, I'd like say. I don't really think. I don't really think about much. <laughs> oh, some people have stitched up with some of these good stuff. Okay, um, best player that you've ever played with? I'd say Adi. Mm. Yeah. Free, okay. Just. He, he leads on the field, man. Yeah, he leads by action. Mm. Yeah. And what's he? What's he like around the changing rooms? What's he like? What's he like in the environment? No, it's good for the environment, eh? um, because obviously, like him and his social presence is like he just likes to express himself. Mm-hmm. So he kind of lets everyone express who they are and who they want to be. So I think that's the good thing about our environment at the moment. Mm-hmm. Like that. Speaking of that, uh, what's your best TikTok? You've done, oh. a, you've done a few good ones, eh? Yeah. Well, during COVID, I was doing the old trick shots. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but when we went to um, Africa, me, Vince, and Devin Flanders done this one TikTok, and I've got, got a few likes, but oh. I'd say that was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> one and done. One and done. <laughs> Oh, when you clock it on first attempt, uh, you may as well retire, eh? Okay, last question, last question. And you've, you've already mentioned this. You said that you don't have good advice, but uh, we'll see after this question. Best piece of advice you have for a water lad listener? I think you've got something good for us. Um, I was going to try and make up something like... <laughs> <laughs> you can. <laughs> I was gonna do the old don't put your egg all your eggs in one basket sort of thing, but that's just not me, man. <laughs> I'd say just enjoy every moment you can. Mm, yeah. Mate. <laughs> and no one looks like they have more fun out on the field or off the field than big Izzy from Gizzy. Oh, that's that's one of my goals every week. Have fun. Have fun. Oh, like it. Simple. But harder to do than people think, eh? Yeah, definitely in the old professional environment, it is a bit harder with all the outside things coming at you. But if you can try to do that, it's it's pretty sweet. Mate, how good, mate. Love it. Love it. What a lad you are. Really appreciate you coming on the podcast, mate. It's been awesome to go through your journey. Um, I knew you were a lad. I've known from the start since we met. As a young fella, um, just out of Gizzy, training with the Hurricanes, absolute legend. But it's all been awesome to see what you've gone on to do. And um, like I said, bolter for 2023 World Cup, in my opinion. Yeah, well, you got to put me in your fantasy team first, Jeb. Well, <laughs> well, now you're back playing. You'll come right in contention, that's for sure. 
meters, tackle breaks, <laughs> line breaks. I know you're a ball player, so mm, definitely a good shout for me this weekend. Hopefully. Captain, captain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I won't be captaining a lock. It's very hard to get points for a lock, to be fair, but um, definitely a good shout. But I appreciate you coming on the podcast, brother. It's been awesome. Sweet as, thank you.